Therefore, it's time for member statements. The member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, aren't we fortunate to have the opportunity to serve? That was how the Governor General, His Excellency the Right Honourable David Johnston, replied to me after I wrote to thank him for his outstanding contribution to our country and acknowledge with gratitude the extension of his term as Queen's representative in Canada. Today, David and Sharon Johnston officially depart from Rideau Hall after seven years of the opportunity to serve. I came to know David Johnston well when I represented the riding of Waterloo-Wellington from 1999 to 2007, and he was the president of the University of Waterloo. I came to look forward to our every interaction and meeting. He was brilliant, positive, focused, and caring. His leadership and creativity helped vault U of W to the forefront of Canadian universities, which also served to strengthen our local economy in immeasurable ways, including helping Waterloo Region become a high-tech powerhouse. It turned out to be superb preparation for his next challenge, Contemplare Meloria, or to envision a better world, which he adopted as a motto. He would choose to make his priorities strengthening learning and innovation, encouraging philanthropy and volunteerism, and supporting families and children. And through his events, speeches, and writing, he challenged all of us to reach higher and achieve more, each to our fullest potential. Is Canada a better place for his efforts? Without question, it most certainly is. And through his energy and personality, the reach and scope of the role of Governor General was animated, strengthened, and enlarged. Yes, we are indeed fortunate to have the opportunity to serve and David and Sharon Johnston's service will be long remembered as exemplary. On behalf of the Ontario PC Caucus, we offer our thanks and wish them good health and much happiness in the years to come. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Parkdale, Hyde Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to celebrate the life and to mourn the passing, actually, of Sheila Kaufman, who uh, was known not just to the residents of Parkdale High Park, but really right across the downtown Toronto uh, corridor. She was the owner of another story bookstore on Roncesvalles and a social justice activist. Uh, the store itself started you, decades back on the Danforth, and she managed to keep it alive by really highlighting the work of other social justice activists, of people who were uh, writers of colour, who were queer writers, uh, children's authors as well. She was very uh, known throughout our, our elementary and post-secondary school system in Toronto for being the place and the person where you could get books that you just couldn't get anywhere else. Uh, she was a board member of Parkdale Activity and Recreation Centre, and I want to tell everybody that on October the 21st, uh, we're going to have a New Orleans-style parade down Roncesvalles from another story bookstore to Parkdale Activity and Recreation Centre in her honour, and there we will. Uh, there'll be a number of speakers who will be celebrating her life. Died way too early at 72, but you know, we all thought she was even younger than that. That's the kind of person Sheila Kaufman was. Uh, we'll miss you, Sheila, uh, but your legacy is still lasting. It's the 30th anniversary of another story bookstore. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Etobicoke Atop North. Thank you, Speaker. Speaking of developments in the great riding of Etobicoke North, Speaker, where to begin even? For example, we have currently underway a $400 million expansion of Etobicoke General Hospital. We are actually doubling the size, the footprint of the hospital itself. And as a doctor and parliamentarian, I can tell you how delighted I am. We're going to be having a new cardiology wing, new respirology wing, neurology, new emergency department, and folks who need dialysis will not need to travel all the way to Brampton. We have, Speaker, as well, eight stops of the $1.2 billion French LRT custom-made, custom-tailored for my riding in Etobicoke North. As you know, starting this September, uh, so many students are benefiting from the free college and university tuition. Families making under $50,000, two- and four-year college is going to be now free. OHIP Plus starts in a couple of months, January 1, 2018. Folks from zero to under 25, for them, medications will be free. And in January 2019, we're scheduling a massive increase of the minimum wage as well as rent control. Speaker, all of these magnificent developments are going to affect the lives, the pocketbooks, and ultimately the prosperity and future education of the great people of Etobicoke North. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further members' statements. The member from Nipissing. 
Thank you uh, very much, Speaker. Well, the show is called America's Got Talent, but over the past few weeks, millions of viewers learned that North Bay has talent too in the name of Sarah Carson and her dog, Hero. Uh, as many are now familiar, Sarah is a highly skilled dog trainer, and for weeks this summer, she and Hero wowed television audiences with their act. Judges Simon Cowell, Mel B, Heidi Klum, and Canada's own Howie Mandel praised her week after week. And week after week, she advanced further into the competition until she reached the show's finale. While Sarah didn't take home the top prize or the $1 million payout that goes with it, she managed to advance to the top five, which is an amazing feat in itself. But even before this, Sarah was considered one of the top trick dog instructors in the world and has taught numerous classes on social media for the past several years. Sarah is a true local inspiration and success story, and you can learn more about what she does on her website, thesupercollies.com. Congratulations, Sarah, and thank you for thrilling not just Nipissing, but America's Got Talent viewers everywhere. We can't wait to see what you're doing next. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure to recognize two outstanding constituents from Waterloo Region who are here with us today. Ron and Shirley Levine have called Waterloo home since 1987, where they raised their three sons, Casey, Lee Jay, and Eli. Tragically, the Levines suddenly lost their 18-year-old son, Lee Jay, in 2007. Lee Jay was an incredibly talented artist and musician, and his parents have dedicated themselves to keeping his memory alive by giving back to the community. Each year, the Levines partner with a local charity and together they print 3,000 calendars of Lee Jay's art, with all of the proceeds going to charity. The 2018 calendar supports the work of Child Witness Centre, a program that provides support to children and youth who have been a victim of witness to abuse or to violence. And I'd like to commend Shirley on her dedication to this project. She works every day to give back to Waterloo community organizations. Her work has been recognized across the region, including a nomination for Oktoberfest Woman of the Year. Shirley and Ron are also proud Waterloo Rotarians and respected members of Waterloo Region's Jewish community. In Lee Jay's memory, the Levines are doing the work of Tikkun Olam pursuing social justice and healing the world. I'd like to thank the Levines for their generosity and compassion. Waterloo Region is a stronger community because of their leadership, and may Lee Jay's memory be a blessing to all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Other members, same as the member from Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it's, it's that time of the year when Ontarians all across the province have the opportunity to experience a bountiful harvest of local, locally grown fruits, vegetable, honey, and other product produce that our farmers have been working hard to produce all summer. This year marks the 150 years since Canada's Confederation, but communities in Northumberland, Quinty West have been holding these events since long before Canada was established, Speaker. Which events are those? In the last several weeks, I've been crisscrossing my riding to attend celebrate and celebrate fall fairs and festivals in each of our communities. In Port Hope, it was there to kick off the 186th Port Hope Agricultural Fair and the following weekend cultivate a festival of food and drink. Family have been visiting Roast Neath Agricultural Society Fair for over 148 years to experience the exhibits, annual tractor pull, and take a ride on the historical carousel. Speaker, the Percy Agriculture Society celebrated its 167th Work World Fair this year with many entries for their best in produce, pies, and other big Ooh, goodies. Hi. Trenton had its first annual auto marketplace in the downtown square. And of course, Speaker, my hometown, the heart of apple country, Brighton Apple Fest, showcasing, of course, all things but Apple, with close to 20,000 people attending. So, Speaker, the events go on and on, and I want to congratulate all the volunteers that made that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener College. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, halt, Dana Lederhosen, Fest Speaker. Hold on to your Lederhosen because the 49th annual Kitchener Waterloo Oktoberfest is once again rolling out the barrels for Canada's greatest barbarian festival. In the true spirit of Gemutlikite, 15 fest halls across our region are opening their doors October 6th through the 14th to young and old, whether German for life or just for the day. 
As usual, our royal festival family, Uncle Hans, Tante Frida, Aunt Ziggy, Aunt Zaga Steiner, will be on hand with over 480 volunteers and 1,300 community and service club volunteers for the second largest celebration of German heritage in the world. Drawing on Waterloo Region's long history of German roots, our annual celebration has had something for everyone since its launch in 1969. From Canada's largest Thanksgiving Day parade to 48 family cultural and sporting events to many fest holland events. And while the Zbigit and the Mallets won't be tapping the first kegs until Friday morning, Speaker, the volunteers and board of directors have long been hard at work preparing and hosting pre festival events. Just this weekend, the Oktoberfest Gala Ball was held at the new Lot 42 space in Kitchener, where 21 year old Michaela Enrich Enric was crowned Miss Oktoberfest 2017. This Thursday, the KW Oktoberfest Woman of the Year will be named um, at the same lot 42 as the barrels get set to roll. And so we invite all to come down to Kitchener Waterloo for a fun filled safe festing, or as we say in the region speaker, Einstein, drive safely. I'm frozen. The uh, member statements, member, member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. On Saturday, I was pleased to take part in the annual Pull Together for Epilepsy fire truck pull in, Durham, in my lovely riding of Durham. Individual formed teams of 10 people each, and work, they worked together to pull a fire truck 100 feet. There were four teams, Mr. Speaker, and I was so honored when I was asked by the Executive Director, Diane, Diane McKenzie, to, to be on one of those teams, Speaker. All funds raised support epilepsy Durham and support those living with epilepsy in, the, in our wonderful uh, communities throughout Durham. The pool is an exciting event and it brings people in the community together to demonstrate to those living with epilepsy that they are not alone, Speaker. There are over 36,000 people in Durham region that live with epilepsy, Mr. Speaker. To put that in context, that's one in every 100, Mr. Speaker. Services commonly provided by Epilepsy Durham include one-on-one -on -one support service, services, advocacy, employment, social skill, and human rights support for individuals living with epilepsy, their siblings, youth, and senior speaker. This is a fun event for family and friends to come out and enjoy and support what a, such a great cause. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to applaud the great work Epilepsy Durham Region does in support, in support of our community, as well as congrat, congratulate them on the 30th anniversary. And they have, they have served our community for 30 wonderful years, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. For the member Sings, the member from Melbourne, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to highlight that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'd also take this time to acknowledge Rethink Breast Cancer, who is here at the Legislature today. Rethink Breast Cancer is bringing awareness to our younger generations through their groundbreaking approach. The organization provides information on breast cancer education, resources, advocacy, community building, and fundraising. Rethink has taken an active role in advocating the government and industry on behalf of patient groups. They are shining light on the process of public reimbursement of cancer drugs and what can be done to improve access and shorten wait times for care. Access to these drugs and treatments is critical to ensure that our loved ones are here for as long as possible. Breast cancer is the most common cancer among Canadian women and will affect one in eight women during their lifetime. According to the latest statistics, it is estimated that 26,300 women and 230 men in Canada will be diagnosed with breast cancer, and almost 5,000 women and 43 men will die from the disease in 2017. It is important to be mindful of the signs and symptoms of breast cancer, which include a lump in the breast or armpit, changes in the breast shape, size, or skin changes. The Ontario Breast Screening Program and making mammograms part of uh, routine medical care are the be best methods for early detection of breast cancers. Finding the cancer early means more treatment options and a better chance of survival. Mr. Speaker, as October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I encourage all Ontarians to get involved within the community to raise awareness regarding this terrible disease. I'd also encourage all women to speak with their health care professionals regarding their screening options and risk factors. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's